Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're talking about Jezebel's manifestation on the home front. And we say that she's a home breaker. I mean, needless to say. <laughs> she's a home breaker. The spirit of witchcraft. It's a home breaker. Now, she builds an empire for herself. She likes to build empires. Though. She builds empires for herself in various influential homes in the society by manipulating her children and her emissaries, her agents into the hearts of powerful men and women. You know, we said she's neither male or female. Just as she positioned Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbal, a Philistine king, into the love of Ahab, the king of Israel, even though God has forbidden them to marry unbelievers. Position her there. And what God and why God said they should not do that is because they will lure him, they will lure his people away from them from him. And that's exactly what Jezebel did. That's what Jezebel did. She lured him, she lured Ahab to build altars to Baal all over the place and to begin to worship him. And then he began to, and he began to, and she began to persecute the, uh, uh, the children of, uh, the real ministers of God, the prophets and the priests. She set up her own priesthood, apart from having her own pastors. And so that's what she does in the home. She puts her children in places of power to marry great men. And she builds an empire for herself by hoarding. By hoarding. She will accumulate vain things, clothing, shoes, and so on. Jewelry. To seduce her victims that she's the most beautiful. She seduces women into thinking that it's your clothing, it's your jewelry, it's your it's your makeup. That by that's how you get husband. She diverts attention from the real issues in relationships which is love godliness which a woman must have love godliness good character good character traits like loyalty and faithfulness no she makes women think that all that is old school old school they tell you it's old school She is not ashamed. She makes women not to be ashamed to expose sensitive parts of their bodies, which only their husband should see, just to seduce the victims, to marry them. As I said, when you see Jezebel in the spirit, she, she exposes her breasts. Usually there are men, more than two. Now, when you see a man that is possessed by Jezebel's spirit, he too loves to accumulate material things. He likes to accumulate clothing, houses, cars, women, many women. And all these things he has accumulated will make him feel he has is a great accomplish ah he has accomplished a lot though they will tell him he has accomplished a lot you can imagine one of our whether senator or i don't remember or is a legislator he brought his four wives or six wives or something 
or four wives into the house, into the National Assembly. They sat at the back when the plenary was going. They were talking about things of, of, of national importance. And he was now boasting how he has accomplished so much in his life. After all, look at me. Stand up, stand up, my wives, my wives. They stood up, see my wives. And I have 2018 children or something or 20 something and I'm having more. You see, Jezebel has lulled him into false sense of security. That that is what is called accomplishment in life. Makes him think, oh, he's all powerful. Psycho fancy. Telling him lies. After all, look at all that you have. What more do you want? In fact, you don't need God. You yourself, you are a God. One of the most beautiful women of all time, Marilyn Monroe. Somebody went to lead her to Christ. Said, I don't need Jesus. I have everything. I, what do I need him for? I have everything. She died a miserable death not long after that. Miserable death. Is that people are coming bending to you? What, what do you need? What do you need? You don't need. You don't need anything. You don't need all that. You don't need God. What, what for? Don't you solve problems for people? They come. You give them money. You give them ah. Uh -uh. Look at how many wives you have. Women, even girlfriends, they are all competing for your favor. You are a great man, Joe. Deceiving him that he's everything. Meanwhile, he's on his way to hell. Now, there's a strange um, story in the Bible which we don't take so much notice of. And that's the story of Nimrod. He's the first manifestation of Jezebel in scripture, actually. Nimrod. Genesis 10. Let's look at 8 to, 9, 8 to 11. Genesis 10, 8 to 11. He was, the Bible says that he was a descendant of Cush. Genesis 10, 8 to 11. And Cush begets Nimrod. Yes. He begets to be a mighty one in the text. Yes. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Yes. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Ten. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Mm -hmm. And Erech. Erech. Yes. And Akka. Yes. And Kalon. Yes. In the land of Shinar. Mm -hmm. Yes. Eleven. Out of that land went forth Asher Ash. mm -hmm. and builded Nineveh. Nineveh. Yes. And the city Rahabot. Yes. And Kala. Kala. Now, all those, the land of Shina is what later came to be known as Chaldea and then named to be known as Babylon. So Nimrod built Babylon. Now, According to other reliable extra biblical historical writings, Nimrod was married to a very beautiful woman called Semiramis, who became his king. Because when he built all these things, of course, he made himself the emperor. And then Semiramis uh, became his queen. And he began to rule over cities even though he was originally a hunter. Then they had a son who was named Tammuz. Now, Tammuz is in scripture, though Semiramis is not in scripture. Ezekiel 8.14, you see uh, uh, Tammuz there. Don't open it. Now, Ezekiel 8.14, you see Tammuz there, women weeping to Tammuz. We'll talk about it. Unfortunately for Semiramis, Nimrod, has, uh, Nimrod was killed at a, a very young age. 
and instead of at I that spirit entered Semiramis, the spirit of wanting to rule. I mean it must have entered her before that. And she's the queen and there's none like her. So when Nimrod died, wow. No 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 no. How will I step down from being queen? It's not possible. She quickly married her son, Tamos, so that she will continue to be queen and rule in his stead, since she was too young to rule. Of course, we know another queen who did that later, Atalia. Hmm. Abomination in the highest order. She married her own son, Tamos. And God quickly slew Tamos as well. <laughs> so she quickly found another lie and said he will rise up from the dead if women will mourn and fast for him yeah now that brings us to Ezekiel 8 sorry I hope you opened it I'm the one that said you should open it now Ezekiel 8 14 It has now become practice because she I'll tell you what happened let's read it first it brought me from the door yes Ezekiel 8 14 then he brought one to the, he brought, then he brought me. me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, yes, which was towards the earth, not. Mm -hmm. And behold, there sat weeping women, there sat women weeping for, for Tammuz. Okay, so this is how we know that this story is actually true because those two names are in the Bible, even though the mother's name, the name of the mother of Tammuz is not there. Now, let me let me tell you what does it mean to weep for Tammuz. She now said that, look, if they would weep for him, he will live. He will rise up from the dead. So they now brought women. And he said, oh, if they will bring eggs. So they brought eggs to the place of worship. And they were now weeping for Thomas to wake up. That means she was trying to produce what? A false messiah. That he, he will resurrect. Well, as we know, he never resurrected. But this falsehood of mourning and fasting for Tammuz became a tradition in Babylon. And the Israelites added it to temple worship during the time of Babylonian captivity. And that was part of the abomination that God took Ezekiel in the spirit to go and see in Jerusalem through the hole in the wall. Ezekiel was in Babylon. He has been taken captive. And God brought him. Say, come and see what your people are doing. They have added the Babylonian worship to the temple. And they too are now weeping for Tammuz. Now, what became of that practice? By the time it became the time of Jesus Christ, it was still being practiced and they call it as Easter Easter that's what they call Easter that's what they call 40 days fasting <laughs> all right now she said they should come into the temple of course I idolatrous temple bring eggs to worship the goddess and to weep for Thomas and they wept for Thomas and mourned for him for 40 days that he will rise up. But he never did. He never did. That was, remember, this was Genesis 10, around the time of Genesis 10. So it was a long time ago, thousands and thousands of years before the time of the Babylonian captivity. So by the time of the Babylonian captivity, the, uh, the children of Israel added it 
weeping for Thomas, they added it to, to temple worship. And God brought him back. Let me read this for you. Ezekiel 8, 7 to 9. Ezekiel 8, 7 to 9. He said, And he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then he said to me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. When I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do there. <clears throat> so one of the things they were doing in the temple was weeping for Tammuz. It's a Babylonian thing which later became known as Lent. Mourning is the same as fasting. They were fasting and praying that Thomas should wake up. He never did. He became part of uh, 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 temple worship and the, the Lent ends at Easter till today. You know Easter is mentioned in um, Acts 12. He said he was waiting for Easter to bring uh, uh, when he killed uh, James and he arrested. It was the time of Easter. Now, how do we know that all these things are the same? Because now in the Western world, during the Lent, during Easter, they have what they call Easter eggs. Yes, they sell it. They, it's made. It's now made of chocolate, and they paint it in different shapes and call it all sorts of things, and uh, they sell it. So eggs are, are comp accompanies Easter in the Western world, and that's how we know that Easter is not of. It's not part of Christianity. It's not part of Christianity. It is the time it has to do with this weeping for Thomas. Amen. Amen. Now we just read about a hole in the world. Let's pray. Say, Lord, show me a hole. In, give me, make a hole in the world and show me the secret of the challenges in my life, in my family, and in the nation. As you showed Ezekiel, Lord, make a hole in the wall. Make a hole in the walls. Show me the secrets of the challenges in my life, challenges in my family, the challenges in this nation, Nigeria. Lord, make a hole in the wall and show me the secrets of the challenges in my life. Show me what to do. The challenge show me how I may I may I may wrought deliverance by prayer for myself, for my family and my nation to break every yoke of Jezebel over my nation, over my family, to break every yoke of, of witchcraft, my family, my nation, and my ministry, my ministry. Lord, show me a hole in the world. Make a hole in the wall and show me secrets. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, for Je Jezebel also networks. We're still talking about what she does in the house. All right? In the home, she networks with mammon to replace true love. There's what we call Jezebel networking. In the home, we're still talking about her manifestation in the home. In the home, she manif she teams up with Mammon, the god of money, using money to replace true love. Jezebel is responsible for the sugar daddy syndrome. Where a man will abandon his family to marry a girl that is half, half the half the age of his own children. It is also in charge of the gigolo, 
gigolo syndrome, gigolo syndrome, where rich older men and women marry, will seduce younger men with money. I may even marry them. So it's in charge of the sugar daddy syndrome and the gigolo syndrome. You see older women with money, marry younger men. One killed her, his uh, mama. What do they call them? Sugar mama. Killed her lately. Stole his, her car. Tied her up. Stuffed her mouth with... Uh, they didn't mean to kill her. Just wanted to steal her car. Despite all she did for him. So anyway, he took the car and was trying to sell it. Then they st after many days, they started perceiving smell coming from her house. They went there and found her dead and decomposing her hands tied up and that's the gigolo has killed her. Now let's look at what, what does Nahum 3, Nahum 3, 4 say about Jezebel so that we know that she's a seller. She's a merchandising. She likes to merchandise. She's a merchant. She deals in merchandise. Look at what she sells here. Nahum 3, 4, what does it say? Nahum 3, 4. He was talking about uh, how there are a multitude of... of let, let's start from 3. Because he was talking about something there. There's something that Jezebel does. So we know what is responsible for some of the things that's going on in our country. Because of the multitude of... No, no, I want you to start from this thing, please. Start from one. Go to the bloody city. Aha. Uh -huh. It is all full of lies. I told you she's bloodthirsty. Yes. And robbers. Likes to shed blood. Yes. The prey departs not. Yes. The noise of the heat. Aha. Uh -huh. And the noise of the rattling of the wheels. Yes. And of the prancing horses. Horses, yes. And the jumping chariots. Chariots, yes. The horsemen lifted up both the bright sword mm -hmm. and the glittering spear. Mm. And there is a multitude of slain. Multitude of slain. Is that not what they are doing with their motorbikes going terrorists yes. all over the place? Yes. Killing people all over the place. I told you. And the Greeks. She is the moon. The moon and the star. She's the moon. Jezebel is the moon. The star is Baal. When they walk together, you get that kind of false religion. Yes, go on. And a great number <clears throat> of carcass. Yes. And there is no end of their corpses. Okay, corpses everywhere. You will hear that terrorists enter this place, you kill 50 people. I don't even know why there are still people in the north. Because they have almost finished killing all of them. They don't kill two, three. They kill, they kill them in multitudes. It's written in the Bible. Yes. They stumble upon their corpses. It's stumbling upon corpses. Yes. Because of the, because of the multitude of the wooden. So what is responsible for all those killings and things? Please tell us, verse four. Because of the multitude of the wooden, mm -hmm. the well favored harlot. Harlot. Mm -hmm. Yes. The mistress of which the senate in nations uh -huh. through her wooden. Families through her so, do you know they've sold Nigeria? They've sold her. They'll, they've sold her. Say, uh, I pledge allegiance to ISIS. Check out. And that is how Iswap entered this, ISIS entered this country. And now named some people Iswap. And Iswap is more deadly than Boko Haram. Do you know what that? Oh, Iswap is more deadly than Boko Haram. Iswap is the one holding um, um, Lea Sharibo. <clears throat> He's the one holding Lea Sharibo. And what is happening now, what God is doing, is that He's making them to fight each other. They've been fighting each other for the past two years, since last year. ISIS and um, Boko Haram fighting each other. ISIS killed Shekau. Yes. The, our own army is trying to catch him from inside the country they went through the back and when he saw that they were going to get him he exploded himself and killed himself so there you have it
She's in charge. She's in charge of selling nations, selling families. She merchandise money. So that's number one. Number two, Jezebel manifestation in the place of political power. We will soon stop. Jezebel's manifestation in the place of political power. She she plays in three places. In the home, in the political power, and in the church. Jezebel's manifestation. Now, the, the perfect example that we have read is still, is still this, uh, the daughter of the king of the Philistines, married to a king of Israel. You see? Now, the, the Philistines served three deities. All right? Baal, Ashtoreth. Ashtoreth is what later became known as Jezebel. So they serve Baal, Ashtoreth, and Dagon. Dagon is the Leviathan's water spirit. Because the land of the Philistines is along the sea coast. Baal, Ashtoreth, and Dagon. Dagon. D-A-G-O-N. Now Jezebel was likely dedicated to Baal. Because her full name is Jezebel. It's just shortened to Jezebel. Therefore, it is not surprising that in that place of political power, uh, of uh, 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 in the place of political power, she would team up with Baal, the Antichrist spirit, to wreak damage to the kingdom of God of Israel. As soon as she married the king, she teamed up with Baal to wreak damage to the kingdom of God, Israel. First King 16, she read up an altar of Baal in the house of Baal, which she built in Samaria. I'm reading it now. And they have made a grove. A grove. <laughs> it's a place of worship in the forest. Like a shrine in the forest. And they have did more to provoke God of Israel. To anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Why? Because he married Baal, and she, and she mar- he married Jezebel, and she brought Baal with her. Remember, we talked about Baal that he likes to dethrone God, so she brought Baal to come and dethrone the God of Israel. <laughs> As if that is possible. Now, this unholy marriage between Jezebel's spirit and Baal, all right, this kind of unholy marriage between Jezebel's spirit and Baal is replicated in religions where there is a marriage of religion and the state. This ungodly marriage between Jezebel's spirit and Baal which she brings into the place of political power is replicated in religions where there's a marriage of religion and the state. Any religion that always want to rule, a milokon, any religion they always want to rule. And typically we find that in the Ishmaelitic religion and in the Catholic Church. Yes, because in Rome, the Pope has his own nation. In fact, the Pope used to be the, the ruler of the of the of the empire of or of the kingdom of Italy or whatever it was called at that time. It was the Pope. He ruled more than the Caesar self. He wields more power even today than the Prime Minister or or whoever they have ruling in Italy. Religion. There was a time that it was the popes that were ruling Italy, the Roman Empire at a point. They were the ones ruling. 
and they used to do the most abominable things. One used to marry his own children, have children by his own children. And he's not supposed to marry you, but he had children everywhere. So he had his children everywhere, and, uh, and he even made, uh, he would make his children to be, to be, let's say, head of the army, you know, a minister here, a king there, you know. In key positions. And key positions. And he's supposed to be the Pope, spiritual ruler. But they, well, now there's some kind of um, sanity, sanity. And what they did was to give the Pope his own, his own, his own country. And it is called Vatican. The Vatican is a country inside a country. It has its own uh, economy, it has its own ambassadors, it has its own currency self. So in such a case, rulership can only be by deceit or manipulation or by use of force when all fail. When you want to rule, use religions to rule, it will either be by deceit, manipulation, or by use of force when everything has failed. And a perfect example is Nigeria, which was ruled by, by, for two decades by Muslims who simply used the armor, uh, uh, army to enforce their rulership to a series of coup d'etat from one Muslim to the next, to the next, to the next. As if there were no, as if there were no Christian generals in the army. Only two times, Gawan and Oba Sanjo. All the others were just handing over to each other. And to show you that it was a rulership of their religion, they tried to hand over to two Muslims. And God said, no, you've gone too far. What's wrong with you? He did not allow them. Now, in the place of political power, the Jezebel spirit is just a user and manipulator of the real ruler. You see? <clears throat> it's a user. It's just a user. It's just using the, the real leader. Manipulating him from behind, just like Queen Jezebel did. So that, in fact, she's the one that is in power. And that's why we don't want a continuous rule of this, our people. Because we are being ruled by this spirit. And that's why they want to rule. Because that spirit wants them to believe that they are the ones that must always rule. Not even thinking that there are other religions in Nigeria. Now let's look at how she manipulated the King Ahab. We'll go quickly. We we'll won't read chapter 16. Uh, okay, we're, we're in um, First Kings. First Kings 16. 31 to 33. Don't open it. We're not reading. First Kings 16, 31 to 33. We are told that she manipulated the king to raise an altar to other god, another god, Baal, in Samaria, which was the capital city of, of Israel then. In the capital city, she raised up an altar to Baal. Hmm. The same chapter 16, 34, verse 34. Together, she and uh, Ahab, they challenged the prophecy of Joshua, which he made over, over Jericho, that this, that this place must never be rebuilt. We used to wonder about that. Why should he curse the place? Apart from being a terrible place, somebody said, well, don't you remember all the all the trouble he went into to bring down Jericho. So he said it must never be rebuilt again. So Joshua proclaimed over uh, um, um, Jericho that it must never be rebuilt again. 
in Joshua 6 26. In Joshua 6 26. But they challenged that prophecy. Suddenly, um, Ahab and Jezebel said, No, it was rebuilt. So they now brought somebody called Hiel to try and rebuild Jericho. And the word of God stood firm. And the Bible says in that chapter 16, 34, that he laid the foundation thereof in Abiram, his first son. So his first son died as soon as he laid the foundation. Ah, and when he finished, the Bible says that, uh, no, he laid the foundation in Abiram, his firstborn. And when he finished to set the gate, his younger son died, Say God. According to the word of the Lord, we spoken by Joshua. So together they challenged that prophecy, but the prophecy stood firm. Chapter eighteen, thirteen. Chapter eighteen, thirteen. He executed numerous prophets of Jehovah's God, slew them. The Bible says he slew the prophets. Chapter 19, 1 to 3. Chapter 19, 1 to 3. Chapter 19, 1 to 3. The king went to, we're not reading it. He went to her and reported how Elijah defeated the prophets of Baal and Mount Carmel contest. And he slew a whooping 850 of them. So she declared war on Elijah using her power of intimidation. Using her power of intimidation. And we can see that she succeeded in terrifying the prophet into hiding. <laughs> Even though Elijah was a true proven prophet of God and he was not afraid he was not afraid to challenge 850 prophets of uh, prophets and priests of Baal <laughs> but a little woman he ran for his life now um, chapter 21 1 to 16 it's a long passage we're not reading but that's the place where Ahab coveted Naboth's vineyard and he went and told Jezebel. Can you imagine? Went and report to her, knowing that she's more powerful than him. <laughs> so, so she said, what? Are you the king or you are not the king? Nonsense. I'll get it for you. So she manipulated some people to bring false witnesses against Naboth, accusing him of blaspheming God. And they now stoned him to death. And that was it. He collected the thing. He collected the uh, he collected the the vineyard of Naboth. We can see that actually, if you look at all the evil that Ahab did, Jezebel was behind them all. She's the power behind the throne. Now we we'll just look at um, a male uh, example of a male Jezebel and close. Now, in the New Testament, the Bible talks about a man. Acts 13, 6 to 8. Acts 13, 6 to 8. Talks about this man that is called Elimas the Sorceress, the Sorcerer. He kept close to political power and sought to block the governor from receiving the gospel. And that's, that's typical Jezebel for you. Yes. And when they had gone through the Isle, Isle of Pathos, Pathos, Pathos. Yes. they found a certain person, a yes. false prophet, mm -hmm. a Jew, mm -hmm. whose name was Bar Jesus. So here is a man that was a Jew, and he was called a sorcerer, and he's called a false prophet. Something that God has banned that must not be found amongst them. And he was even called the, daughter, the son of Jesus. That's what by Jesus means, son of Jesus. So he was, yes, seven. Okay. Which was with the 
deputy of this country, mm -hmm. Sergius Palos, mm -hmm. a prudent man who called for Barnabas and so and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimar the sorcerer, or so is his name mm -hmm. and interpretation, he stood there seeking to turn away the deputy from the truth. Mm -hmm. Then so, which also is called for. Mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. No, so that's that's all. That's um, I'm okay with. It. We are okay there. So he was a false prophet, and you will not know because he's a Jew. You say our God has banned them from being a false prophet. He's unlikely to be a false prophet. So deception, deception. And Paul did not take him lightly. He was trying to block the gospel. Just what Jezebel did. He removed the prophets of God and displaced and displaced them him with uh, with um, his own with his own her own prophets. Now, so we can see that we can we can see that it is not only in um, in a woman that this spirit operates he was using divination he was a false prophet using divination now we can talk here quickly about the difference between prophecy and divination difference between prophecy and divination and how they work the first thing is that divination is of the devil Prophecy is of God. So the first thing you must look at is the character of the person. Jesus said, by their fruits you shall know them. A true prophet of God will keep the laws of God. He is spirit-filled. He will be spirit-controlled. You will not find him in sexual immorality. You will not find him stealing. You will not find him doing all those things which, they are, which the Bible forbids. He will be showing the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, faithfulness, cleanness and all those things. You will not find works of the flesh in his life. So that's number one, how you will tell a prophet from a diviner. The second thing is that a diviner, a prophet prophesies, as Jesus said, he said, those that believe in me, out of them will flow rivers of living waters. So a prophet, a prophet prophesies what he has seen or what he has heard word of knowledge, prophecy, you know, dreams and visions. He'll be describing to you what he has seen. A diviner by, by the Spirit of God, you know, it will flow. A diviner uses familiar spirits. A diviner uses familiar spirits. When you go to see a diviner, the person who is going to see a diviner already has his own familiar spirit. The diviner has his own familiar spirit. A familiar spirit is a demon that has been in the family for hundreds of years. And unless you get rid of it, you will be following you everywhere. So somebody comes and goes to see a diviner. The diviner can see the familiar spirit. The familiar spirit will come to the diviner and start telling him about you. There she is. In fact, her name is Esther. Her grandmother's name is Magdalene. And her grandmother lived in Abekuta, in Obantoko. We'll even give you the number of the street. And because you cannot believe that he knows my name, he knows my grandmother's name, he knows my, my family compound uh, address, oh no, 
He must be a man of God. No. No. Because by, by in fact, before the end of that consultation, <laughs> he would have told you all the things you are going to buy and how I have some of them, I can sell it to you. Just drop so much money. That's how you know a diviner. Money will always come in. Money will always come in. Or he will try to sleep with the woman. He will say, one of the things we're going to do has to be done in my, in my house or in the church. And we're going to do the ministration by 12 midnight. And when you are coming, come alone. You see. They will prescribe things that are abominable. Abominable. I was asking somebody who said, Oh, our pastor, uh, the man is not a pastor, he's, uh, he holds the fellowships. He's praying for women who, um, who are looking for husband, who are looking for children. And they said, Ah, it was the, even the day, the program, that program, he anointed our bodies. So I said, excuse me, what do you mean your pastor anointed your body? She was now confused. I said, no, tell me, tell me. Are you saying you undressed and the man anointed your body? She could no longer talk. I said, do you know that it is the head that is anointed in Bible? The only body you anoint is a body of a dead person in the Bible. That is how you know this is a divinator, this is a false prophet, is not a prophet of God by the things that he will prescribe. The other thing about the diviner, the, the prophet of God will just tell you, go and fast, use these scriptures to pray. And don't tell me, oh, but when we went there, the man had a Bible on the table. Did he open it? Did he quote from it? There's one of the diviners in this nation that they call a prophet on TV every day. He will hold the Bible, but he will never open it. And he will never quote from it. If he will quote maybe one sentence, he will never open it. The way our pastors will open scripture, the way we are opening scripture and reading now, because the only weapon we have against the devil is the word of God. It is fire, it is hammer, it is, it is stones, it is hailstones, it is ah, a sword of the spirit, it is a double-edged sword, it's, it's a weapon on its own. Now the other thing about the diviner is that he will tell you things that have no eternal purpose. Things that have no eternal purpose. Things that not go back to Christ. Things that have nothing to do with Christ. Things that have nothing to do with heaven. It will predict to you those that will win the World Cup. It will tell you who will win the division, something, something. It will tell you the color of your bra and your underwear. That is even uncleanness. The Bible talks, says that such things is uncleanness. They will pretend that it is a word of knowledge. No. Word of knowledge usually has to do with healing. Word of knowledge has redemptive reasons. Maybe a man of God is ministering and he want, God wants to increase your faith. He will now say there are three people here called Flora. One, you are wearing a red dress. The other, you are wearing, uh, you come from so, so, and so. The third one, this is your first time here. You see, that's the kind of thing that the word of knowledge would give. It will not start talking about your underwear. So that is how you know a, divin a diviner and a child of the devil.
prophecy always turns back to Christ and prophecy always has a redemptive part. There'll be a way out of that problem in the prophecy. He said, God will not allow us to be tempted beyond which we are able so that with the temptation he will show us a way out. Even in the prophecy to Nineveh that Jonah gave, there was a way out. What is the way out? He said in 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. That means you have 40 days to do something about it, which they did. They quickly went fasting. And God no longer destroyed Nineveh. Although Nineveh was destroyed later. But at that time, because they followed the redemptive uh, uh, escape route that God showed them, it was not destroyed. Amen. <clears throat> we'll stop there. Then we start with Jezebel manifestation in the church. And then we'll talk about how she can be defeated. Amen. Let's Amen. pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We appreciate you. Thank you, Jesus. You are our God. You are our Father. Yes, we appreciate you. Yes, Blessed be your name, Lord. Yes, thank you for all that you have taught us. You, Show us how we might put it into practice. How we might get prayer points out of all this and begin to battle the spirit of Jezebel and break a stranglehold over our families, our, our nation, so that the yoke might be broken. The yoke of witchcraft will be broken over our lives, over our calling, over our families, and over this nation. So that we can do the work that you asked us to do without let or hindrance. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Bless Amen. God. Amen.